Yeah, but thank you so much for opening it up in worship. And we're really excited to hear what God has put on your heart. And yeah, I'm just going to pass the mic on to you to share what you have. We'll see, we'll see how long this actually is. But <laughs> no so, I was, so um, just to jump into it, I was thinking about the other day before you even asked me, I was thinking about what is something that I wish I had known, like there's many things, but something that I wish I had known and operated in when I was younger and like, what are th some things that have taken me this long to, um, to get to? And not that like you don't go through a process, but there's certain things I just didn't realize um, I was capable of doing like through the Holy Spirit in me. And so I was just kind of like, what is something like, what are one of the things? And one of the things was a major thing was that I wish I had known that, um, that, that there is no junior Holy Spirit, like th that we could do, like whatever age you are, you can, um, if you've accepted Christ and you have the Holy Spirit in you, that you can do what any adult that you're seeing does. And that, um, that his power is in you and you can, you can heal the sick, that you can cast out demons, that, and it's scriptural, that it's for you that there is no small, like there's a smaller size for kids or for a younger age, Holy Spirit. And um, so when I was, um, I grew up in a Christian home and my parents were spirit filled and everything. Um, but for some reason, I don't, and they were, they would involve us in ministry and stuff. But for some reason, I never comprehended or really saw for myself to desire it or knew that I could, I guess, like the permission, like you feel like you need permission, like to know that you can do something um, until I was like 17. And oh, by the way, I look very young, but I'm 26. <laughs> um, but so that's why I'm talking like teenager. Um, so yeah, so I was 17 and I was walking with the Lord, but I had yet to really um, fully express like, you know, praying for people and just knowing that I was even capable of that. So I, had, I went to a revival and um, that was, I, I had an encounter with the Lord that just totally wrecked my life. Like I went from, you know, having a relationship, but I still had areas where I was like, kind of on, you know, like I wasn't, I wasn't firm in it. Like I kind of, it was a little bit like, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but you're kind of wavery a little bit. Um, and, but I had this deep encounter with the Lord where I knew like, he is all that I want. Like he is so real. Um, and he just touched my life. And I just wanted to give him everything, give him the music, give him everything. And um, also in that, at that revival, I saw teenagers praying for people, which now that sounds so like, I didn't really know that before, but I saw people my age praying for people and, and seeing people healed and like seeing people like experience God through these teenagers. And, um, and so at 17, I grasped that picture and that realization, like, wait, this is for us. Like, this is something we can be operating in. And so that was the main point that I wanted to minister to all of you that are on here today, that, that you are able to do, like you are called to actually to heal a sick, to do all of these things and know that you are authorized to do that. Like you don't have to grow up or feel like, you know, get to the place where I feel like I'm you know, I'm capable of doing this because honestly, even as, as adults, like you never get to the feeling where it's like, oh, I'm fully capable because we rely on the spirit and it's the spirit in us that is um, doing the work. And so that's what I was looking back at. And I was like, I wish I had known earlier. Like if I had, if I had felt that at a younger age, like I could have been operating in that for even more years than, than I have been already. And so I was also thinking this, the um, story came to me of, um, of when um, the Jesus was on, um, wait, I don't think he was, a mountain. he was on some kind of mountain, but um, all the people, all these people had gathered to listen to Jesus and um, they had been there a long time and Jesus was like these or I think the disciples were like these people need to be fed they've been here a long time and Jesus said you feed them to his disciples and they were like how are we going to have enough food for like 5,000 people like how is this going to happen we don't have enough food for this and then uh, there was a young boy it says a young boy gave his lunch and the disciples brought it to Jesus and they said well we do have like five loaves and two fish here from this young boy and Jesus took it and he broke the bread and he started passing the fish and it multiplied and it 
fed all 5,000 people. And, and I, when I was thinking about it, I thought specifically, I don't know if I've even heard this talk about much, but the fact that the child, the young person gave it, that was something huge. Like he was a part of this massive miracle like this huge gigantic miracle. And so that just kind of goes correlation with like, there's an example for you that you are caught, like look at what God will do if you know that you're, you know, like he just gave it like, okay, this is, I don't know, we don't know the exact story, but he gave what he had and then God used it uh, and did this mighty miracle. And so know that you are called to that you are authorized if you've accepted christ you have the holy spirit inside of you i'm sure um chelsea and her husband talked about this but like if you have it inside of you you can do these things and the specific scripture i have it on my phone where did it go um is oh here it is is um in mark 16 17 through 19 says and these signs will accompany those who believe so simply just those who believe not not a certain age, but it just says those who believe. Sorry, my lighting's a little interesting. Okay, um, uh, will come to those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. Basically, supernatural things will happen. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. And after the Lord Jesus said this uh, or spoke this to them, he was taken up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father. So that was basically the last thing that Jesus said before he left the earth was that this is what you can do. And he didn't put an age limit on it. So um, the other thing that was kind of like tied into that is, and it's something that a lot of us can struggle with, um, is comparison. And that kind of goes along with that as well, is that at, at younger ages and at every age, really, we can feel, you know, we, we compare ourselves with other people. And especially, I mean, these ages where we have like social media and all this stuff, and we could say like, you know, like, how could I do that? And you can look at someone or even me today, you could be like, how could I do that? If you knew where I come from and what I've like overcome, it's been a lot. Like, I, like even the fact that I'm talking right now is like, you have no idea. <laughs> it's a huge deal because I was the one that would like, you know, I would talk like when I, you know, someone asked me a question, I might say something, but I was not one to be like talking to people or singing for people. I was terrified and God called me and it it's taken small steps, but I've watched how God has multiplied it. And it's just, so yeah, so comparison, um, it basically will begin to kill what God has on your life because you could literally, um, see where like year after year, like a day turns into a week and a week turns into a month and a month turns into a year. And then years go by and where you're spending time comparing, comparing like, oh, I can't do that because, um, you know, so-and-so is doing it. And like, I, I don't think I can, like, I, I'm not as capable as they are. Um, and so, yeah, it's just getting that rooted that, that we can't compare and realize too. I remember somebody told me this, and this was so powerful in my life, that God could tell you something or give you something that he's never given anybody else. That should be like, that's the huge thing that should like make you realize that like, wait, really? Like, no, it's so true that literally you could be the only one on earth that God speaks something specific to and it's your call to do it. And so can you see now like how comparison would begin to kill that and would begin to like God, you wouldn't see what God is wanting to fulfill um, when you compare. So when God speaks something to you, or you look at the Bible and you see these things, know that like you're commissioned to do it. And you literally could make a change in somebody's life that nobody else can change. Like there's someone that you could speak to at your school, someone that you could, um, reach that nobody else could reach. You could say something that no one else maybe has even said because it was from God. Um, and so I just wanted to encourage you with that. And to kind of break it down practically, like um, just, yeah, like your, your family, your people at school, anywhere, like giving, giving that little and don't, and don't underestimate the size of what you give, even if it's just a kind word, even if you're the one to, to be, you know, like um, just give some kind of compliment to somebody or um, to help out your, your mom or your dad or um, yeah. So, so um know that that god will take those things that you would see as so small and he'll make 
He'll make miracles happen. Be encouraged to know that you are called to do these things and um, that, that the Holy Spirit is with you, that, that God walks with you. And if you're afraid or you feel like, because there's a lot of the, those factors as we're walking and we want to do, you know, we're like desiring to do things for the Lord. A lot of times it's like we have a, we have a fear or like, it's just really hard. Like I can't do this, but we need cur- like we need to take courage. And actually this is something I ministered yesterday was that a lot of times in our mind, we're trying to have faith for something like, like I just, if I can think it up, like I need to get my mind in order to have faith. But what it really is, is asking God for courage to take steps of faith. Because when you look in the Bible at all these different stories, it took a step of faith um, to actually see something happen. Like it wasn't just made up in their mind. And then you see where the mind just follows um, what you took a step on because it, it takes a step to do it. So that was the most major thing that I really wish I had gotten. And then I hope that you get, that was a lot of information very fast, (laughs) but, but yeah, so it's just, it's not comparing. It's believing that God has given you the power to, to do incredible things, to see miracles happen and just apply it, apply it to your everyday and know that you can make a difference every day in your environment, every day in your family, just loving your siblings, um, speaking kindly to them and know that whether you see like in the beginning, whether you see um, like, you know, something happen immediately, because a lot of times we could give something or we speak something and someone is unkind back and you're like, why did I just do that? Like they didn't even respond correctly. But there's also scriptures where the Lord's talking about how it's not really our, uh, we, he said, just don't worry about like what, what response you get basically. And just do what I'm asking you, be love to people, um, give the kind word and, and know that it's counted in heaven. And ultimately when you stand before the Lord, he's going to say, good and faithful servant, you did well. Like regardless of, of how people responded to you, you did so well. You were faithful with what I, I put in your hands. Wow. 